Freddy's cyclonic reign comes to an end on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for March 15th. Cyclone Freddy first formed on February the 6th and now on March 15th the remnants of the storm are just about to completely diminish. We also have a tropical depression actually though to the east of Tonga, 91P and Invest which currently doesn't have a name. In the Atlantic it's 78 days until hurricane season and a slight imagery outage there. Uh, but you can see over the main part of the ocean, there's a few lines of fronts and extratropical systems hurling themselves around the North Atlantic, but quite uh, clear further south. A 30% area of interest that we've marked near New Caledonia right now, looking not too bad on satellite imagery. That one could have a chance as it moves southeastwards at first and then could uh, scoot back towards the northwest. Over the Indian Ocean, it's very quiet now, uh, a frontal system extending from a little disturbance off the coast of Madagascar there, and the remnants of Freddy, which still uh, is producing a little bit of precipitation, particularly further east over Mozambique, which is uh, quite se severely affected by the storm and has been for some time. And there's that tropical depression east of Tonga, 91P, currently moving in a southeasterly direction. Uh, a fairly weak tropical depression right now, but it does have a circulation and is blowing up convection. Satellite imagery across the world right now looks like this. Look out for any of those red zones. Not seeing many now after that previous flurry of tropical cyclone activity, but there's a few areas across Brazil and over parts of Africa not tropical cyclone related that are producing very high amounts of rain at this moment in time. So here's what's left of Freddy and we're still tracking it just along the border between Mozambique and the southern tip of Malawi. You can see that most of the cloud cover has uh, decreased in its size, uh, no convective cloud tops anymore so it is just remnants but still possibly delivering significant rainfall. Here's the system near New Caledonia, known as 90p Invest, uh, exposed potential circulation there, but it is trying its best with a potential mid-level circulation, which continues to move sort of southerly actually, rather than southeasterly, and looks like it will move on the eastern, uh, sorry, the western coast of the main island of uh, New Caledonia. And here is the depression that clearly looks like one there. You can see the main islands of Tonga there on the left hand side and this system moving out over pretty clear waters. I think oh, the only other island out there towards the east is Niue uh, and this is this system. Uh, convection not particularly strong just yet but certainly good uh, value for tropical depression status and that's probably the biggest thing we have on the radar right now. Sea surface temperatures look like this on the new Force 13 uh, website graphics, which I must say are pretty fabulous. Very warm temperatures approaching 30 degrees off the coast of Mexico, but that's about it in the eastern Pacific. It is warming up fairly nicely in the Caribbean Sea, 27 degrees as a general rule. A little bit cooler further towards the east, but the 26 degree isotherm is struggling to get further than that just yet. Around the coast of India, particularly on the southwestern part, very warm waters there, 29 degrees Celsius, and also warm the eastern part of the Bay of Bengal. Southwest Indian Ocean shows extremely warm waters to the northwest of Madagascar and out over the main area of the ocean. In the Mozambique Channel, water's a little bit cooler, 27 to 28. Towards the Australian region, extremely warm waters off the coast of Western Australia there. You can see temperatures above 30 degrees Celsius and quite a few areas in uh, off the Northern Territory and the Queensland coast as well, which are looking pretty good for those temperatures right now in the tropical zones. And in the South Pacific, that warmth continues well beyond Fiji and towards French Polynesia and extends quite a way towards the south as well, 26 degrees isotherm to about 25, 30 degrees south. Western Pacific also getting its uh, self going there with very warm waters in the equatorial regions and the tropical zones picking up some of that warmth as well. It's quite a bit above average now in the Philippine Sea, but the, uh, the South China Sea remains very much below average right now. 
Mozambique Channel also yet to recover from Freddy, uh, but the rest of the Indian Ocean is around average. The Australian region, generally around average, but the Coral Sea is a significant upward anomaly. And the anomaly uh, to the warm side in the South Pacific east of Fiji has quietened down a little bit there, still a little bit above average. Oceanic heat content looks like this, loaded with large amounts in the uh, deep tropical zones there of the South Pacific, extending out to the turquoises towards Fiji. And in the Western Pacific, it's really picked up in the last few days. If you watch some of our older updates, massive pool of oceanic heat content extending up now towards Guam and the Philippine Sea, which is really interesting to look at there. GFS computer model out to five days. It does try to spin up that system to the east of Madagascar for a little while, but it doesn't get very far, and if it does develop a circulation, it quickly unravels before it reaches La Reunion, which it does get there, limps towards the islands, probably just as a little bit of a breeze and slight precipitation by the time it does, around about the 18th of March there. Elsewhere, nothing happening there, and Freddy isn't coming back, folks. It isn't. In the South Pacific, uh, look out for two systems here, one on the left hand side, that's the 90p that we're watching, becoming a tropical storm moving through New Caledonia and then turning back on itself and then turning more towards the west later on. Another system on the right hand side, the current one that we're watching, Depression, GFS really not doing much with that actually, so it's a bit behind the curve there, uh, but something might just develop near the end of that run uh, on that five day period, a little bit further east there, you can see it, but a little bit lower latitude, sorry, higher latitude, so I would say not a convincing opportunity. So we could get some significant rainfall accumulations over New Caledonia now for the upcoming seven days. This is the seven day projection for rainfall. The western part of the island much drier than the eastern side but everyone will get some amount of rain over that seven day period and we're looking at maximums of 15 inches there towards the capital Noumea and that is approximately, um, I'm trying to work that one out, uh, over 300, nearly 400 millimeters of rainfall and isolated amounts um, of higher possibly as well. Uh, but out at sea there, 18 the maximum, of course, won't be affecting land. And a good four inches there, 100, meter, 100 millimeters for Vanuatu as well over that time period. And Fiji gaining a little bit of the action as well with some general tropical rainfall. In the longer range, day 5 through 10, look towards the southwest Indian Ocean for another potential system. Here it comes, and that one is churning towards the Masserine Islands. GFS has been consistent with something forming in that area for quite a while now, and that could be a significant pass close to Rodrigues. It's not a very long-lasting system, and only gets to mid or maybe high range tropical storm status on that run, and that's within 10 days, so certainly something to be sitting up and taking note of. There could be a tropical cyclone there next week. In the Australian region for the same time period, looking off towards the western side of the country, uh, potentially another tropical cyclone forming up there as well, not far from uh, Timor and Yamdina and continuing off towards the west and becoming a very powerful storm actually, a small one but a powerful tropical cyclone towards the end of that 10 day period, so something to watch out for there but it is a long way out and shouldn't be affecting any land areas. That's all the serious stuff done. You can take a look at the barcode, scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store. That's what I meant to say. Where we have all of our usual items as well as full season and individual storm animations. And I'll say it till I'm blue in the face. We still have the still waiting for Hone t-shirt uh, for as long as we're waiting for it, which I think is quite a long time. Into the Silly Range, day 10 to 16, we have the continuation of that strong tropical cyclone that pushes off towards the southwest and then eventually does a recurvature, slow recurvature towards the coast of Australia and may just impact them a little bit along that western coast towards the end, but it does turn post-tropical and stalls out in the usual fashion. Of course, people will be first to point out that uh, Freddy's forecast was originally a little bit like this, uh, who knows, it might get pushed a bit further west, but surely we won't see anything like Freddy again for as long as we live, maybe? Am I bold enough to say that? In any case, you can talk about any of these developments on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13, where we have all of our uh, topics there of all disciplines, but especially Tropical Cyclone and weather around the world. 
What happened on this day? Just one cyclone was active, but it was an interesting one. Cyclone Inlala in March 2007, which was making landfall pretty much at this moment on the northern coast of Madagascar, uh, coming off from its Category 4 peak intensity, still a Category 3 at this point when it made landfall, and I imagine it caused substantial damage. I don't have figures with me right now. It was the only system active around the world on this particular date in that calendar year, uh, but certainly quite an impressive one. Back to this year then, and we're still awaiting as we get edging just a little bit closer to the Atlantic hurricane season. The first name will be Arlene in the Eastern Pacific, Adrian, and in the Central Pacific, as you well know. We are still waiting for Hone. Only 11 storms so far this year, we're still waiting, although it feels like Freddy has led us on for 5 or 6 separate lifetimes. In the Western Pacific, next stop is Sanvu, and in the North Indian Ocean it will be Mocha. We've been waiting for those two storms for a fair while now as well. And in the Southern Hemisphere, where it's still all going on right now, still near its peak of the season, Herman is next in the Australian region, Fabienne in the Southwest Indian Ocean, and Lola in the South Pacific. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.